Namaste. If you receive the call from a distressed girl from the past that gradually becomes your time war BFF but switches into psychopath mode and tries to murder you and your whole family, what would you do? In this how to beat video, we follow Say Yon, look at the mistakes she made and figure out what we would do in order to survive and ultimately beat the call. If you like this type of video, consider leaving a like and subscribe. Say Yon is on her way back to her child at home. I am not sure how she intended to arrive there, but without the help of the local strawberry farmer, the opening scene would be a pretty long one. Once they arrive, we learn that she has lost her phone somewhere along the way, and of course in 2019 this is a pretty big deal. Since her mom is bedridden in a hospital, she desperately needs a phone to communicate. As she looks through her old house, she finds a cordless phone, plugs it in and calls her lost cell phone. The people who answer and found the phone aren't much helpful and demand a reward just before they hang up. It doesn't take long and the phone rings the first time. When she picks up, the voice on the other side mentions in much distress how her mom is insane and that she got locked up in her room. Both conclude the caller must have dialed the wrong number. Wrong number or not, that is a pretty weird call to receive. But it gets even crazier. After Se Yon comes back from visiting her father's grave, the phone rings again. This time the caller mentions how her mom is trying to kill her and that somebody must help her. At best it's a terrible joke and at worst somebody is about to die. Either way you are the only one aware and therefore the only one with the power to do something. If I received a call like that I'd be pretty stressed out. I would at least call the cops and let them know about the content of the weird calls I'm receiving. Even if it's just to put my mind at ease. She goes for a nap instead. This woman must have a pretty healthy sleep pattern. If I spent some quality time in this creepy old villa and received frequent calls like that, I would probably reach out for some Xanax or just leave. Yeah, that's the last thing I would want to happen. I see two options here. You either go check it out, which you should if you plan on continue sleeping, or you pack your stuff and leave. If you decide to check it out, at least arm yourself. Chances are pretty high that that was coming from an intruder. According to the state of this house, it looks like nobody has lived in it for quite some time. If I were homeless, a serial killer or someone on the run, estates like this one would be my first choice of hideout. But of course, she ignores the rationales and goes to have a look barehandedly. Turns out it was just a portrait that fell down, lucky this time. But something still doesn't seem right. When she tries hanging it back on, she figures out that there is a hidden part behind the wall. I don't know about y'all, but if I found a secret part of my house, I'd be pretty freaked out. If this is a house in which you have lived for several years but never noticed this secret part existed, it could very well mean that somebody built it in after you abandoned the house. If that's the case, then you probably don't want to go check it out on your own. When she goes checking out the hidden part against all logic, she finds a box with some creepy content in it. Among items straight from the exorcist, she finds a diary that explains the daily tortures the owner had to go through. Next to the diary she finds a photo of a woman about the same age as her that was shot 20 years ago exactly one day before our main character's father died. Coincidence? I don't think so. After receiving another call, our character concludes that the caller is the owner of the diary and the same girl that was tortured 20 years ago. What seems to be impossible at first turns out to be true after our main character successfully predicts future events that are about to happen to the caller in the past. Now, it is easy to think that this whole story is a pretty cool thing to experience. Both have their fair share of problems, both share the same age. It's a perfect combination to cope with each other's difficulties in life. But playing with time is a very dangerous thing. And the person who is in the future is the person with the least power. If you are able to talk to a person in the past, then you hold all the power until the point where you start sharing information. Even the most basic things like names carry a lot of weight with them. The future person cannot change the past, yet the person in the past can freely change the future. So both are in similar position until information is shared. 
but once information is shared, the person in the past starts to grow in power with each new bit received. Everything you share with the past can and will be used against you, so you must be very careful on what you say. The most important thing therefore for our main character would be to take a minute and think carefully. It isn't a very difficult concept to grasp and she seems to be a rather bright person. If I were in her position, I sure would enjoy the scenario as well, but for the sake of my families and my safety, I would take use of an alias and make up a fake story about myself until I have figured out more about the person I'm talking to. Because if this person is messing up my past, it will automatically affect my present. But she doesn't give it a second thought. I assume she too was so socially hungry that she just ignored all the red flags and just enjoyed being of value to someone else. And let's be honest, being able to predict the future makes you a pretty cool person. It doesn't take long until our characters have the stupid idea to prevent our main character's father from dying in the past. Causing her to skip over to an entirely different timeline where the father is still alive. While nobody around here seems to have noticed a change, she seems to remember everything from before, but later more to that. The single best thing to do after this timeline switch would be to destroy the phone and never look back. This would cause this timeline to remain until the end. But of course, it isn't that simple. After all, a complete stranger from the past just saved your father from dying. Naturally, you feel very thankful and unfortunately very indebted. What happens next is pretty insane. Our main character's life turns all flowery and beautiful. She eats with both parents, goes shopping with them and just enjoys the wholesome nature of an ordinary family. Through the pure bliss she's experiencing, she starts to neglect the relationship she has formed with the caller from the past. The big problem is, if she could bring back your father, she definitely has the power to take him away again too. Sure, preventing someone from dying and taking someone's life are two very different things. For that, you must be a resentful psychopath. Yeah, I'm not sure if you want to keep this friendship alive. A friend who cannot partake in your happiness isn't a friend to begin with and someone you probably want to stay away from. But to be fair, while our main character is wearing fancy clothes and shiny nail polish, the girl in the past is still being tortured and fed pet food daily. I'd probably grow pretty resentful too if the only thing I get to eat is raw grass while watching chicken commercials. The big problem here is, making the stranger from the past to save her dad is causing a big moral dilemma. The contrast between each character's life has shifted dramatically. While one is in heaven, the other one is in hell. The only rational thing the main character can do is to help the caller from the past and tell her how to escape her mother's insanity and pay back her debts. To be fair, this is a thing every single person in her shoes would do. Fact is, you owe your whole life to her and this person is living through hell every single day with no means to escape apart from the possibility of your intervention. Even if you disregarded that person completely and destroyed the phone instead, it would haunt your conscience until the end of time. The best thing she could have done before instructing the girl from the past on how to escape would have been to consult as many people as possible that knew her. Chances are they would have mentioned that she was sick and a threat to society. But even knowing all of that, would you really leave that girl back in hell after she has made your life the happiest you've ever experienced? Our main character can bear the emotional dilemma and tells the girl from the past about the impending death she will face. With this information, she successfully dodges the attack of her mother during the following night, causing in the mother's death instead. We don't know yet for sure, but it seems like an animal has been freed with no way of return. In the following events, the local strawberry farmer pays a visit to both families at the same time 20 years apart. Unfortunately, he discovers the body parts of the murdered mother inside the fridge. Case proven, this girl is officially a psychopath. Murdering someone out of self-defense is acceptable, but chopping that person up and stuff it into your fridge next to your veggies and kimchi is freaky and makes me want to skip my next meal. She inevitably has to get rid of the farmer, causing him to have never existed in the future. 
Oddly enough, nobody seems to remember him apart from Seiyan, proving that it's her consciousness that is moving through different timelines other than people vanishing or appearing like the movie wants us to believe. Our main character naturally concludes that something must have happened to the friendly farmer and for once she starts out pretty smart. She inquires around the whole neighborhood and finds out that he was murdered by her time war BFF. She gets to see confidential police notes, she reads the newspaper of the past and she even directly talks to a woman in the neighborhood that was assaulted by the girl from the past in her childhood and everyone is telling her the same thing, that she's dangerous. Even though she has all this information, she is stupid enough to perform the dumbest move of the century. When she is receiving the next call, she freely shares her concerns. Look, first of all, you have never even met this person, plus you had at least three sources telling you back to back that this girl is a murdering psychopath, and yet you still had to confront her directly? I am not sure she has understood that she's connected to the past. If she thought just a second or two about the events of the past week that caused her whole life to turn downside up and added one and one together, she would have realized to never touch that phone ever again. Every change that has happened so far in this movie was orchestrated by her giving information to the past. But I somehow understand how she wants to confront her directly. After all, she must feel pretty guilty. But the best thing she could do without effing things further up is to pay her a visit at the prison where she's held captive in the present. That way she can freely express her emotions without causing any further damage. The girl from the past isn't the brightest girl but she definitely knows about the power she holds. Even the dumbest person becomes godlike when knowing the future. She pressures our main character in giving her more information about how she got caught. Logically, the most important bits of information are what the evidence is as well as the date of her capture. Our main character realizes that this phone call was a very bad idea and rips out all the cables so she can't be reached anymore. Smart move but a bit too late. What she should have done instead was buying time. Everything is about time right now. The easiest way to do that is to give false information to the past that can't be figured out easily. I would have told the girl from the past to give me two hours so I can go to the local police station and gather as much evidence-based information about her capture as possible. This is a believable story that buys you a lot of time, plus makes you sound like a powerful and reliable ally. During those two hours, I would script the perfect story that promises the girl from the past false security, hopefully causing her to lower her guard. Here's how I would do that. Firstly, I would tell her a later date than when she was captured, causing her to feel less under pressure. Secondly, I would go through each case covering the murders of the mother as well as the strawberry farmer and make up a believable story without sharing the crucial bits of information that caused her capture. The best way to do that is sharing real information to make you believable, but use information that holds no relevance in her capture. That way you earn trust while you plot a lethal strike at the same time. Unfortunately, our character does nothing of the like, but is visibly worried and she should be because there is a psychopath targeting her right now as we speak and there is no chance to interfere in any physical way. The only power she holds would be the power of deception, but she doesn't seem to be aware of it. And at the same time, this happens. Terrible timing for a visit. And again, the following events were completely avoidable if she answered the phone call from before with a strategy in mind, which would have been possible if she at one point thought about what it means to be able to talk to the past. She jumps into a new timeline where no happy life seems to be found. When she's rushing back home, she finds an abandoned house implying she has never lived here in the first place. Naturally, she gets emotional, but this isn't the time for any more stupid decisions. But what our main character does is generally a very smart idea and in accordance with the method I have mapped out before. She tries to lure the girl from the past into a trap through giving her false information. What she's trying to do is sending her to a place where there will be a gas leak explosion, hoping she will die in that accident. In order to lure her over, she tells her that she will be able to retrieve the evidence there that would normally cause her capture. What seems to be a very smart idea is carried out terribly wrong. There was one crucial detail that she didn't consider. She actually mentions what the evidence was that made the capture possible, which is a big mistake. 
because that means if for some reason her plan fails and the girl in the past doesn't die, the fight will be over pretty quickly since the girl in the past now exactly knows what she needs to find in order to avoid her capture. And unfortunately this is exactly what happens, causing another timeline switch where the psychopathic girl from the past was never imprisoned and still lives in this house. At this point our main character has already committed so many mistakes by trying to change the past in her favor, it becomes increasingly difficult to save the situation. Up until now every time she tried to set things straight, she messed things further up, making the situation much more complicated and causing me a very serious headache. At this point in the movie, the single best thing she can do is to visit the cops and report everything she knows about the murders the girl from the past has committed. She just needs to pay attention to not sound like she's crazy. If she does it right, chances are very high that cops would investigate and discover countless evidence helping to finally convict the psychopath and at least set that part of the story straight again. But before she can do that there is one last important thing that must be done first. Destroy the phone. Because as long as the future psychopath has the ability to talk to her past self, she is in control of pretty much everything making it impossible or at least very difficult to catch her. While it might be too late for a happy ending, if things are done correctly from here on, it can still turn out acceptable as opposed to what will happen if she tries to save the situation one more time like she does in the movie. 